So I've got a simple question for you, too. Why? Why do we need new content? Why do we need more? Well, I think we're actually offering way more than just new content. We are trying to bring together the best of Silicon Valley and Hollywood in a way that has not been done before. And we're trying to create a whole new form of content that is designed exclusively for mobile to make the viewing experience fantastic along with a, a really different content strategy. So it's not just content. Right. And, and Andrew, I would say um, I think we're not more of what is uh, obviously a, a, an amazing moment, renaissance moment, uh, you know, golden era of television. Um, what we are setting out to do, it's obviously a high bar, ambitious, is to actually create a new form of storytelling. And, you know, our sort of mission statement here is to actually tell two-hour movies in chapters mm -hmm. um, and to tell them, you know, the premium stories with the best possible talent, give them the resources, and make this native to mobile and a great experience on the go on your phone. So yeah. it's not more of the same. It's something I think that's very differentiated. So walk me through exactly what this is. It seems like serialized content. It's mobile, mobile, mobile only, I believe. Mobile only. Mobile only. Um, you're distributing this via your own platform. Um, what kind of content, Jeffrey? Well, I think um, we look at it, and I, you know, I think everybody's aware we've been rolling out um, a, a good deal about this over the last uh, couple of months. We've gotten a lot of momentum going, and it really falls into sort of three types of content. At the top of uh, sort of our pyramid, we look at lighthouses, and lighthouses are two to three hour movies uh, that are told in chapters that are seven to 10 minutes long. Um, our uh, sort of quick bites, which are... Um, which is the name of the company. Yes, that's the yes, idea. Yes, but the, 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 the... Yes, that is. Um, our, our quick bites, which are we call alternative, meaning non-scripted, mm -hmm. and they cut across all kinds of different shows, and we've announced... Again, I don't want to repeat these for it. it and then what we've started rolling out is what is the third and really is the foundation of Quibi, and I think one of the most valued and important parts of it that we really haven't... Uh, we've just begun talking about, which are the daily essentials. And we announced this morning um, that our goal is to have um, between 15 and 20 uh, of these daily shows, which are uh, a highly professionally uh, quality curated around uh, information, all types of information. So we're partnering with NBC News. Uh, 6.30 every morning, you'll wake up, and there will be... Um, again, a, a super network quality show curated for 25 to 35 years old, hosted by somebody who can be our Tom Brokow for this generation, um, and uh, that on the go in the morning in six minutes, you're going to get the headline news. We'll do it again at the end of the day at six o'clock. Um, and um, uh, so there's a whole series of these that we're, that we're going to be discussing in the coming months. So you're putting together a network, basically, a channel, uh, if you will. Well, it's a streaming platform, and so uh, it's on demand, and it's going to be, and Meg should talk about this, it's very personalized to each individual, so um, it's, it, it will custom to you and your, your interests. Think of it more around, uh, I think, the analogy um, or the use case that we uh, have for music today. If I go on to you know, my Apple Music or to my Spotify, it's instantly servicing my interests, my needs, and, and knows what I, uh, what I like and does a phenomenal job. Television actually hasn't done that yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, we're on our way to it, but the television ecosystem is really quite different, and, and Meg really should talk about personalization. Yeah, please do. Well, if you think, as Jeffrey described, we have these three different kinds of content, and every single person's Quibi will be unique to them. You know, you may like the news in the morning or a sports show, or you might find a movie that is told in these 10-minute chapters that you like, and we will quite quickly customize what you want. And again, our um, success metric is not hours watched. Mm -hmm. It is the amount of times you come every day to Quibi. We're trying to create a daily consumption habit. And so we want to make sure that, like, when, when there's an interesting search and find metaphor, which is we give you a feed every day of 25 things that we think you're going to like. Mm. Now, if you go through the 25 things, and there's something, you know, obviously we'll take you through to the library and, and a, you know, different um, engagement form. 
but it's very personalized. And we have to be mindful of this because as Jeffrey said, this is on the go viewing. The average session length is probably six to eight minutes. And so it cannot take eight minutes to find what you're no. looking for. No. It has to almost be instantaneous. And we'll do some things like if you've watched the news show that Jeffrey talked about three days in a row, maybe the fourth day you open the app, it'll start streaming that for you because we know at that time of day that's what you want to watch. So all of the infrastructure you described is highly expensive. And indeed, you've raised a billion dollars for that, right? Um, some of your investors, Disney, Warner, Sony, Viacom, NBCU, MGM, Lionsgate, I mean, it's pretty much most of Hollywood. Um, what are you spending the money on? Well, the infrastructure is not the most expensive thing, obviously, by far, because today we build in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And um, this is such a difference from eBay, you know, back in the day, where you, we had to build the church for Easter Sunday, right. which was an expensive proposition. Sure. Um, this is all cloud-based, and, uh, and so, but the, so the two biggest cost components are the content and also the marketing, because mm -hmm. we have to tell people about this new service. No one's heard of Quibi. It's a different use case. It's, it's a whole new thing. We're, we're creating a whole new category, and, and that takes marketing money. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about the, the content acquisition? I mean, that's something yeah, you're I mean, very familiar with. I mean, it, you know, again, when you look at what really the two big components, we're spending uh, uh, in the first year, the startup in the first year, $1.1 billion on the content and uh, about $470 million on both the platform and the marketing and promotion of the content itself. So these are both pretty aggressive, very ambitious programs. Um, and um, as I said, our, our, our content, I think, is cutting across many, many different, um, uh, uh, different verticals and interests for people, and I think is inclusive and, and, and diverse on purpose. And this is all about the millennial, right? That you, you are demographically focused, is that? Uh, right? Yeah, the target audience for the content is 25 to 35 year olds. Um, we think we'll pick up seven years younger and seven years older, so you can think about 18 to 44, but what we know about startups is you have to be focused. You cannot try to be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. So we think it's really important to have a bullseye around who we're making this content for. So I, 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 I asked a millennial, uh, about you guys, and uh, Let's get ask a millennial, right? And um, this is a millennial. And she said, uh, "Quibi is a Quibi is a dumb prem premise, and it will be a big failure." Mark my words. And I want to know, and the reason, by the way, the justification did you do for that. A thousand people survey of this, it was one. Or, yeah, I, just I one. admit. Yeah. But 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 seriously, the the, the okay, reasoning well, behind it. <laughs> the reasoning behind it. <laughs> was that, that this is not actually the way people consume video. P the, the people of, of interest to you consume video. They're not well, well, interested let me just in... Say, let me just say to that millenni who you spoke to, <clears throat> yes. uh, I'm not sure what planet she might be living on because mm -hmm. here are just a few incidental facts. Sure. There are two and a half billion people who have smartphones. Um, on one single platform alone, which is the most widely distributed, democratized, egalitarian platform ever called YouTube, you have two billion monthly active users watching a billion hours a day. Obviously, they've missed that person <laughs> somehow or another. And here's just a really interesting fact. In 2012, um, we watched, I say we because this encompasses a rather wide, diverse audience, in a 18 to 44-year-old consumer on, on, on their device watched six minutes a day. Mm -hmm. In 2017, they watched 39 minutes a day. In 2018, they watched 60 minutes a day. Today, we know that number is, in 2019, is already over 70 minutes a day. So, again, I just have to say, I don't know where you, what rock you found this millennium under, <laughs> but there must be the one who's not watching anything in this regard. So, well, they well are, done. No, no, I, 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 think, I think she would agree with you, but the, the bigger question is, do they want, you know, Hollywood, high-quality, original, scripted content? Dif different don't they just want, good, good and I hate question. to say it, but cat videos? Okay, that's, different. A, that's a different question. That's a completely different question. Yes. We have a... Of, 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 you know, we, we'll, we'll give you our fantasy answer to that. Please. Too, right? Yeah. That's why we're here. We believe in it. So, 
I guess I would say to you, I'll give you two instances where you can look backwards for all of us. We've all participated in this. In 2000, if, I'm sorry, if you take 1990, the pinnacle of broadcast TV, mm -hmm. right? Multiple TV shows that had viewers of more than 40 million viewers a week. Seinfeld, Friends, ER, Home Improvement, I could keep going. This little company called HBO comes along and says, it's not TV, it's HBO. What do they do? Eliminate commercials. They change the form and format, so no longer 30, 60, 13, 26. No longer beholden to standards and practices, so you could make content quite different from what you were seeing on broadcast, ad-supported TV. So you have Sex in the City and Sopranos and The Wire. And then finally, they spend money in a way that you couldn't, an ad-supported couldn't compete with subscription. And 20 years ago, they ordered 10 episodes of Band of Brothers for $125 million, okay? And today we have 150 million people paying $15 a month for not broadcast television. I would say we are not YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, we're Quibi. And if you can see it there, you can't see it on our platform. Not because there's anything wrong with that content, we love it, it's fantastic. Just like broadcast TV was fantastic and free, and yet many of us were happy to pay for something different, premium, and a different type of content in it. And that is in fact what we're doing. One more comparison, sure. Okay, only because it's relevant to the daily essentials, which I think is what you know is the next round that you're going to hear a lot about from us. I know this is hard to imagine, but just think about it. Six or seven years ago, all music was free. You could type the title of any song into a device, and there are 35 million titles in history. Any of them were available uh, for you. Here we are, seven years later. And there are 189 million people who are paying $10 a month for the same music. It was free. Now, what did, why are we paying for that music today? Why? Because it's professionally curated. We have playlists, we have recommendations, and we have features that make that music now custom to me, to my use, to my, you know, to my consumption habits in it. And I would say to you, information today is as ubiquitously available as music was seven years ago, but no one has made it convenient. And in fact, that may be the greatest single value that Quibi is gonna ultimately provide to people, which is convenience around information. It's, I think we will, if we get this right, our brand will be defined by telling these great stories in chapters, which is a different form. It's not movies, it's not television, it's the next thing. And so, uh, those two use cases, to me, when I look back at what happened then and what we're doing now, are in fact directly analogous. Yeah. I'll say I look at this a little bit of a different way, and Jeffrey and I look at just about everything in a different way. But um, when I look for great consumer tech businesses, I look for three things. Thing number one is, are the trends right? Are you on the right side of history? I've been on the right side of history. It was called eBay. I've been on the wrong, when my business was on the wrong side of history, it was called HP. And it's way better to have the trend and the wind at your back. <laughs> um, and every um, thing is wind at your back. I mean, Jeffrey talked about how many hours of video people are watching on their mobile phone. In Silicon Valley language, this is up and to the right. This is an accelerating growth rate. Why is that? The experience is better. The content is better. And we are going to double down on even better content and an experience that makes watching video on your mobile device a singularly great experience. It's good today. Yeah. We think it can be fantastic. The second is, is there a white space? Is it an existing consumer behavior or do you have to change consumer behavior? This is an existing consumer behavior. We need to give them something to trade up to into a white space. And no one is making Hollywood quality content in its short form for the mobile. And you might say, well, why is that? Because if your only monetization mechanism is advertising, you can't actually afford to pay $100,000 a minute times 10 minutes and a million dollar piece of content because you can't sell enough advertising to cover it. So the business model has to be a combination of subscription plus advertising and that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And then lastly, of course, is there a sustainable competitive advantage? And we think there is here. I think a lot about content fatigue. Um, I'm in the business for starters, but also, um, you know, I think about when I want to pull up a show on television, and I tried to do that, and when I say television, I mean OTT, 
Um, and I tried to do that over the 4th of July, and I couldn't remember, was, was that movie on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon? And I think I burned 15 minutes just trying to find the damn thing. How are you going to deal with that? Because even though you are not competing directly, directly with, you know, the old line companies, the Netflix, Hulus, et cetera, you're competing for attention. But they're already, again, Andrew, I'm going to, you know, again, just sort of take, as I, as I meant, you're, you're challenging. We're meant to answer in these. I don't want to be defensive about it, but I am. Uh, <laughs> Please do. I don't want to be, but God damn it, I am. Um, <laughs> You're comparing apples and submarines. Watching television on a TV is not what we're doing. Literally, you can't get what we're doing on a television set. So what you can say is, can we grab that seven in the morning to seven at night on the go? So here again, just sorry for your Mr. Millennial-ish person here, from, t from seven o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock at night, if you are 25 to 35 years old, these are just facts. Yeah. You spend five and a half hours on this device. I, whatever you're doing with your TV set, whenever you're trying to go find whatever the next show is, we can talk about that ecosystem, but you're on this device for five and a half hours. What are you doing? You're communicating, collaborating, you're on social media, you're playing games, and you're now watching today 70 minutes of short form content. Our goal, what we are doing, our white space, that 70 minutes is growing. We think we will increase and continue to accelerate that growth. Now, whether that's gonna take away from somebody somewhere else, I'm not sure. And we will actually take share. And our share is if we have people watch three to five pieces of content a day of ours, that's it. We are a blockbuster hit if we can achieve that level of consumption, right? So we're looking for people to watch 15 to 25 minutes a day with us what we're offering them is a very different experience. I will offer the following. If you are 25 to 35 years old and you have an hour to watch a piece of linear television, you know, one hour storytelling, between seven in the morning and seven at night, you're underemployed. <laughs> in which case, I don't think you're gonna be subscribing to us. Seriously. Like, who has an hour to watch anything during the day? Nobody. There's not a person who's... Somebody watches an hour of TV during the day. Raise your hand. <laughs> Good. Where's the Millenni? Is she here? <laughs> There's the Millenni. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm no. Defensive. That's all right. By all means. But, but uh, you know, I'm thinking about your competitors in terms of install base. Not so much what they're doing today, but what they could do, right? What, 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 what's stopping I'm the stop Netflix of the world to Why do? Why are we not having Jeffrey? a conversation? This is, she'll, she'll, she cools me down Jeffrey? here. In this here comes the, 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 the bucket let's of water him, comes pretty quick let here. Let him ask the question, and then no, we will answer it. No, don't let him ask the question, Meg. You have to stop him before he finishes the question. <laughs> the point of this. It's a, this is a duel. It's not an engagement. <laughs> and there is the difference between Meg Women and Jeffrey Katzenberg. How come you don't sit here and have a debate about is uh, Hulu or Disney Plus or uh, HBO Max, like how are they going to affect Apple Music and Spotify? Zero. It's a different thing when you are listening to music, when you are watching television, and we're going to come back here a year from now and prove to you that Quibi is in its own place. It's not the same as though. Now, you can talk about short form sure. and whether people will actually... That is the big bet. That's the yep. big gamble. Will they migrate into something premium? And my, I have to look to, again, and say to you, I ask in this room, name me a single widely distributed, widely consumed product, a consumer product, any product ever, that when somebody came along with a better version of it, a more convenient version of it, a premium version of it, a luxury version of it, that we, that some subset doesn't, doesn't migrate to it. You can go to Walmart and get a pair of 100% functional sneakers for $19.95. You can go to Skechers and get them for $49. You can go to Adidas and get them for $125. We can go to Supreme on Fairfax and get them for $650, right? True of the hotel room that you're staying in, sure. the car that you're driving. You do know this water is free. <laughs> <laughs>
and yet we pay for this shit. Like, <laughs> and, it's bad, and the bottle is bad for the environment. Some guy who was upstairs, what's his name? Peter Fan's going around, literally he's got a cooler with this thing, water that'll kill you. What's it called? Uh, liquid, liquid, liquid death. Liquid, liquid death. death. Oh, God, I'm going to pay for liquid death. You open it up, it's water. <laughs> we pay for it. Peter's going to be a trillionaire for taking water and putting it in a can instead of a square bottle. Wow, innovation. <laughs> you know, I was going to follow up with a question, but I think we should just go right to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I have two, two, two announcements to make for you. What's that? Yes, that's right. Please do. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> well done. <laughs> it's my straight man over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so two new pieces for the Daily Essentials. Yes. Um, and uh, here uh, first. Yes, the that's right. This is new at Brainstorm Tech. We're trying Tech. to help him remember what he's yes. supposed to do here. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm distracted maybe by maybe the water. Maybe you should ask me the question, May. Yes. What's the thing that you're announcing today about Daily Essentials, which is perhaps the most important part of Quibi? Thank you, Meg. I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things that we actually found interesting research, which is one of the brands that millennials actually care and have an amazing affinity for, is actually BBC. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, in addition to our NBC anchor show in the morning and the evening, 12 noon every day, we have uh, made a deal with BBC to do a global news at 12 noon uh, uh, every day from then. And then, thank you, I give them, they're good. Um, and then, because I wanted, uh, I think it's important for people to understand that obviously when we give you so much news, you're not going to be able to sleep at night. Right? Because the more news you get. So in the world of like wanting to sort of give people a whole sort of suite of different things, we've actually worked with a team who have designed, um, and I, I actually have to read some of this because I'm, I can't pronounce half these names, and Meg will help me out here. But we've created, uh, and we, haven't, we don't have the name for it yet, but just think about, uh, a, it's a meditation uh, show. It's a, it's a little thing that, you know, at about that you play before you go to bed at night or want to go to bed at night when you can't sleep. It's about three, three minutes long. Um, and uh, it's to chillax you, chill lax you. Um, and, and what it does, and this is sort of interesting here, so this is actually a, a group of people scientifically designed here, and it is a unique combination of a, a, a sense of, of, of sounds, and it's something some people may be familiar with, I was not, called ASMR. Yes. See, okay, there we go. And for those of you like me who don't know what that is, that stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. I still don't know what it stands for, but that's what it says. <laughs> um, and it literally, those sounds, when you listen to them, and you can find them, there are different places, you can go online and find them, it's an audio, thing, it literally does re relax you. What, what these people have done quite brilliantly is combine that together with a uh, visual uh, a film that actually is known to do the same thing. So whether it's water falling over a brook or you know, uh, walking through uh, fresh snow for the first time, where the sound is all amplified, but you have these beautiful, beautiful pictures married with this beautiful, beautiful sound. And you can imagine for someone like me, when they tell me that you're gonna actually show me a little three minutes and it's gonna relax me, I thought that was the most hilarious thing I'd ever heard, <laughs> right? Like, there's no chance this shit's gonna work. So, and? they come in and we have a room of about 20 people, they're all wound up, everybody's pitching different ideas and this, and they- Millennials. The millennials, by the way, yeah, all millennials. And, and they play the show and all of a sudden, after it's over, everybody starts talking like this. It was the most amazing thing. Even you. Even me. It was shocking. <laughs> so we have a nightly meditation show that is going to relax you from all that aggravation that we give you in our news all day long. So 19 more ideas coming your way. <laughs> oh, also, very importantly, we haven't figured out exactly how we're doing this yet. We will actually be able to give you your horoscope every day, which I'm told is extremely important to a lot of people. That sounds terrifying. But let's go to the back for questions, please. Yes, your name and who you're with. Jeff Glick with Foursquare. Watching this panel defend against Andrew's skepticism is actually 
entertainment that I would pay for. Um, <laughs> we will Thank get you. you. It's four ninety nine a month with ads, seven ninety nine without ads. We're good either way. That's right. So my, my question, building on Andrew's skepticism, that you can wean people from Instagram video, YouTube video, and Snap video. Not that millennials don't want content, but that you can wean them off their existing patterns. Can you speak to the utter failure of Verizon with Go90 to do something similar, and how you're different? Well, in fairness, um, I, I don't. I, I, first of all, you know, I, I appreciate when people try to do something new and different, and uh, when they did, we wouldn't be sitting here today had they not tried what they did. So I, I actually think it was, we, we are, well, there are lessons we could learn, but there's a fundamental difference, which is they were an ad-supported platform. They did not actually have the resources to do what we did. They were doing it. They took the existing world of, of that and tried to migrate it up, and they migrated it up you know, by uh, instead of making content for uh, fifteen hundred dollars a minute, they tried ten thousand dollars a minute. Is to literally put it into dollars and cents. Um, they they try to elevate out of the YouTube enterprise using that talent and those creators uh, uh, in it. What we're doing is actually migrating what is the network cable uh, streaming television ecosystem the Hollywood quality, we're in the $100,000 a minute, just if you want to put dollars and cents to it. So, you know, what they did was a, an, an interesting play. It didn't work. We don't think that they're comparative in it. And frankly, we've learned from their lessons or learned lessons from, you know, what didn't work for them. Yeah. All right, one here. Yes, very quickly, please. Sure. Marianne Morrow, Ninth Gear. Um, this question is for Meg. Does Jeff always talk this much? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the second is, where will you be at Quibi five years from now? Well, yes, Jeffrey does talk this much, but it is actually, it's a very, you know, remember I started out by saying it's the power of Silicon Valley and Hollywood together. Our superpower is that we are completely different and we have figured out how to really do something I think that's quite unique, both in the content as well as the technology side, which we haven't had much chance to talk about. But where we'll be five years from now, our hope is that we will have created a whole new category of content for viewing on mobile where when you wake up every morning, you have a little TV in your pocket and you go about your day and you are watching three, four, five, seven quibbies a day to keep appraised, to be entertained, to be informed, to be inspired, and that we've created a platform that is fantastic for advertisers, fantastic for customers, and obviously, you know, good for, for Quibi shareholders. So that's where we hope to be. And, um, you know, we think this can be in the millions of users, and this is creating a whole new category. So will you two come back in a year and tell me how it went? We sure will. Great. Let's see. We, will, right. uh, we will have been, up, you know, we launch in April, on April 6th of next year. Mm -hmm. So we'll be up for April, May, June, and half of July. So Brilliant. we'll come back and tell you how it's going. Brilliant. All right. A round of applause, please. <laughs> Thanks, too.